The peninsula of Hoth Head is located 15 kilometers northeast of Dublin. It is the northern boundary of the Dublin Bay. Its highest point is 560 feet above sea level. It has been settled since prehistoric times. And there are two villages on this peninsula, Hoth and Sutton. Hoth was known as a fishing village and a small trading port since the 14th century. Today, there's about 8,000 population. Hoth Castle is the St. Lawrence family's private residence since 1177. Originally, the family held all the lands of Hoth Peninsula, the island of Ireland's Eye, and other lands in North Dublin. Currently, the grounds are about 250 acres. They have walking trails, swan pond, and many gardens. The current stone castle has parts dating back to 1450. Folklore has it that in 1576, Queen Pirate O'Malley attempted to visit the 8th Baron of Hoth. He was seated for dinner and was not available, so the gates were closed. She grew angry and abducted the young grandson. He was the heir to the family's title. Eventually, she released the heir with the agreement that the gate will remain open to the public and an extra place setting will be set at the table for any unknown guests that may arrive. These traditions still exist today. In 1738, the house took on the current appearance. Thomas, third Earl of Hoth, who was born in the early 1800s, brought a herd of deer to the wooded part of the lands. This area now has the name of Deer Park and it's also the location of the Deer Park Golf Course. About 150 meters behind the golf course buildings, there is a collapsed dolmen. This is a single chamber megalithic tomb. Here is a chapel. It's in ruins, but it sits right next to the castle. Behind the castle, you'll find the National Transport Museum of Ireland. This castle was used in the 2016 film, Love and Friendship. In 2018, the castle, the grounds, and the island of Ireland's Eye were sold to an investment group. The island of Ireland's Eye is a small, uninhabited island about one kilometer north of Hoth Harbor. You'll find the ruins of an eighth century church, the book, The Garland of Hoth, which was an illustrated manuscript of the Gospels, was created on the island in the 8th or 9th century. This book is at Trinity College today. The Martello Tower on the island is one of three on the Hoth Peninsula. This was built in the early 1800s to help defend Ireland against any invasion from France. Sutton, historically a farmland, connects Hoth to the mainland. Their population is just under 6,000 people. The other old castle on the peninsula, it is the Core Castle, which is an L-planned tower house built in the 15th century. In 1579, it was passed to the 8th Baron of Hoth. It provided protection to Hoth Castle as it was on the land route to the castle. In the 1830s, it was used as a grandstand on the Hoth Park race course. This was a horse track that ran from the Hoth Castle down to the Core Castle and back. As this castle fell into ruins, it was partially restored in the early 2000s. It now sits in a gated community, which you can see from Hoth Road. Just past Core Castle on Hoth Road, you will see the mile marker. These signs were used for the general post office to show the distance in the old Irish miles between Hoth and Dublin. Hoth Harbor. Work began on the harbor in the early 1800s. The Hoth House was built for the supervisor of the project around 1807. The harbor opened for business in 1818 with the lighthouse on the East Pier. King George IV visited the harbor in August of 1821. 
and they saved his footsteps in concrete. The main purpose for the harbor was the fishing industry. This peaked in the 1870s when a thousand herring boats would use the harbor. The West Pier buildings helped support the fishing industry at the time. In 1914, this harbor is where the guns came in, which were used two years later in the Easter Rising. In 1955, the lighthouse was converted to electric and the keeper no longer needed to stay at the lighthouse. The harbor had a very large upgrade and renovation in the 1980s. Now it has a fishing section, a leisure section, a nice park, restaurants, and apartments. If you're lucky enough to find Cowbooter Lane, you will find that this is an ancient road connecting the harbor to settlements on the top of the hill. The Hoth Tower overlooks the harbor. It was handed over to the British Post Office after it was no longer used for defense. In 1903, this was the site for testing the wireless telegraphy system to Wales. It also was the terminating point for the underground telegraph cables from Wales. It eventually was turned over to the Irish Post Office and then to Fingal County. In 2001, it opened as a museum for vintage radio. St. Mary's Abbey. The first church founded in this location was in 1042. It was replaced in 1235 with a parish church. The ruins that are there today are from a church built in the 14th century. The St. Lawrence family supported this church and the tomb of Christopher is in the back of the church. He died in 1462. The Hill of Hoth Tramway ran from 1901 to 1959. It was an electric double-decker tram car and it would run a five-mile route around the peninsula starting at the Sutton train station and ending at the Hoth train station. Most of the route was converted into local roads, but there are still a couple places where you can see the history of the tramway. First is on the Hoth Road at the beginning of the harbor. You can see the sidings of the old bridge that used to cross the road here. Even the roof of the Doghouse Blues Tea Room is where the tracks ran. Across the street, you would see where the tram came down off the hill before it went to the host station. Second area is in Sutton, the tram shed. It's still there, but it's been converted into a private residence. Just with a simple Google search, you can find some great pictures of this tramway. Bailey Lighthouse. This is located on the south side of the peninsula. The first lighthouse on this site was built in the 1660s as a cold fired beacon. The current lighthouse was built in 1814. It was built lower, closer to the sea level because the old lighthouse would get lost in the fog. In 1902, a system was installed that allowed the gas light to flash once every 30 seconds. In 1953, the keeper's house was built below the lighthouse. In 1972, it was converted to electric lighthouse, which produced a flash every 20 seconds that can be seen for 26 nautical miles. In 1996, it was converted to an automatic operation, so the last keeper left in 1997. The third Martello Tower is the Red Rock Martello Tower, which is in Sutton. It was built in 1804 and is the first tower on the north side of Dublin. It acted as a general lookout for the North Dublin Bay area. In 1979, there was a fire that destroyed the tower. By 2006, it had been renovated into a residential dwelling. Currently, it can be rented just like a hotel room. Right behind the Red Rock Martella Tower is the Sutton Castle. It's also been called the Sutton House. Originally, it was a 40-room home for the Jameson family, built around 1880. In the 1970s, it was converted to a 19-room hotel it was used as the background for the Van Morrison album, Vitum Fleece. Also, in 1982, 
the wedding of Bono and his wife took place here. The hotel was sold in 1997 with the seven acres of land. In 2001, it was converted into 17 luxury apartments. One reason why this is a tourist destination is there are a lot of outside trails. There are four main ones, considered the cliff walks. They range from six kilometers to 12 kilometers in length. The sights from these trails really give you perspective of the North Dublin area. One of the great finds on these trails is the old World War II sign, Erie, E-I-R-E, -E, the number six. This allowed pilots to know that they were flying over Ireland and exactly where they were over Ireland. Over the years, many of these signs were heavily overgrown with vegetation, but the local community is starting to restore the sign. On the ground, you can't really tell what this is, but when I put the drone up, you can clearly see the R is coming out. Hote is a beautiful place, surrounded by water, great restaurants, great history. With our nets and gear, we're faring on the wild and wasteful ocean. It's out there. Hunted for the shoals of herring. We left the home grounds in the month of June, and for canny shields we soon were bearing with a hundred crown of the silver garlands that we'd taken from the shoals of herring. Stormy seas and the living gales Just to earn your daily bread You're faring From the Dover Straits To the Faroe Islands And you're hunting for the shoals of herring Well, I earned me keep And I paid me way We were hunting after shoals of herring Your net rope man now, boy, you're on the move And you're learning all about seafaring That's your education, scraps of navigation 
station as you hunt the bunny shoals of Harry. Night and the day, the seas were daring. Come wind. Hunt the bunnies.